Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Passive Income Lifestyle Series. I'm your host, Travis Watts, the Director of Investor Education here at Ashcroft Capital. In today's episode, what we're talking about are real estate syndications, or what some call private placements, and how to effectively double your money through an investment like this. Now, disclaimers, as always, not financial advice, not telling you or anyone what to do with your money. So please always seek licensed financial advice. Now, with that top of mind, I'd like to get started by just diving right into a syndication, what it is, how it works, and show you how the math adds up. Now, I'm going to use an example of what I invest in the most, which is multifamily apartment complexes that have a value add business plan. So a multifamily apartment complex just means that it's an existing unit that has hundreds of renters in this particular example. It's stabilized, it's cash flowing on day one, and a value add business plan would mean that we're going to buy it, we're going to renovate it, hopefully increase rents when we do so, and then sell it down the road for ideally a higher price. So let's begin with you, the limited partner investor, looking at an investment overview, which is going to outline the proposed projected returns. And we'll say in this example that this particular deal will offer a 7% cash on cash return, a 20% IRR, which stands for internal rate of return, a 2x equity multiple, and a five-year hold period. Now I'm going to circle back to these after I walk you through the example and explain them in more detail. But let's make those assumptions up front. What I'm going to walk you through is if this proposed example business plan went exactly according to plan and they hit those exact metrics, what would it look like over the five-year hold period from your vantage point? So let's assume that you decide you're going to invest $100,000 into this private placement or syndication. So if they're able to pay the 7% cash flow, that would effectively mean $7,000 each year in cash flow distributions coming from the renters who pay their rent and other revenue generating items. So if we break that down monthly, it's about $583.33 per month, assuming this operator pays monthly distributions. As we move into year number two, Let's just say it's the same outcome. It's $7,000 per year. So we'll make that same assumption all the way to year five. We'll assume no refinances, no hiccups in the business plan. And now they're looking to sell the property. Now, during this process of waiting for five years and collecting your distributions as they come, what's been happening in the background? Well, hopefully the general partner or the operator has been executing the value add business plan which means they were renovating the clubhouse, the amenities, the units, making the place safer and nicer for the residents and lifting the rents in that process. Now, on a side note, it generally takes three to five years to effectively execute a value-add business plan, depending, of course, on the property, its size, and its current condition. Something to keep in mind. And now that the property is going to be listed as a newly renovated and remodeled community, it's going to be highly correlated to the net operating income in which it currently produces. And this is a big differentiator between investing in single family homes that are very correlated to the comps or the comparable sales in the local area. While that's still a factor for commercial real estate, it mostly has to do with how much revenue it's producing. Let's say in this example that when this property was first purchased, when you decided to invest, it was producing $1 million per year in net operating income. After making these improvements and five years down the road, it's now producing $1.5 million. So buyers are looking at the net operating income to decide and determine what type of yield they're going to get if they decide to purchase the property. So we'll say this property was initially purchased for $14 million when it produced a million dollars a year in net operating income. Now that it's producing 1.5 million in net operating income, it wouldn't be unexpected for a property like that to be listed around 
$21 million. And we can run the simple math to determine why this might be. If you divide $1 million by $14 million, you can see how it might be achievable to get a 7% cash on cash return out of this deal initially. And if we divide 1.5 million by 21 million, which is the new proposed price, you can see how it might be possible for the next buyer to also receive a 7% cash on cash return upon purchase. Now, if this property sold at $21 million, then that would be about a $7 million profit that's split between the limited partners and the general partners. So let's recap and bring this back to you, the limited partner who decided to invest $100,000 and see what that means. So first of all, remember, you've collected $35,000 in cash flow distributions over the five-year period. And let's say the portion of the equity that you're entitled to upon sale is $65,000. So if we add those numbers together, you'll see that you effectively made $100,000 on your investment or doubled your money. And the last thing you would expect is a return of your original capital that you put into the deal. So that's a simple example of a value add syndication going what we call full cycle all the way through the business plan where everything went perfect. So if we recap and go back to the original projections, they said 7% cash on cash return, which was derived from the residents paying rent and any other revenue generating items on the property. The 20% IRR internal rate of return it was made possible by taking a look at your total return that you made over those five years and dividing by how long you were invested in the deal. So if you take $100,000 and divide by five, it was $20,000 per year or a 20% IRR. A 2x equity multiple means that you effectively doubled your money throughout the investment hold period. And of course, a five-year hold period means simply a five-year hold period. So it's important to remember that there's never promises or guarantees when it comes to investing. Some deals may outperform expectations while others may underperform expectations, and some may just perform at expectations. Also, there may be unexpected positive events that happen throughout the hold period, like a refinance where you could potentially get some of your capital back early things like that. It's really going to depend on the general partner, the operator, the deal itself, and the business plan that they're proposing. So one key is simply to diversify, not have all your eggs in one basket for that purpose. And the more diversification you have, the more likely it is that you can build stable, predictable cash flow and wealth creation long term. So I hope you found some value in this short explanation and example. If you'd like a deeper dive, if you have additional questions, please reach out to me, Travis at ashcroftcapital.com. Be happy to jump on a phone call, answer any emails, jump on a Zoom, whatever you need. We're here for you with a full team and staff. If you want to learn more about Ashcroft Capital, our current deals and opportunities, what we do in the multifamily syndication or private placement space, you can visit avaf3.com for more information. Thanks so much for being here. Have an excellent week. We'll see you in the next episode.